two of the corners done so far. Yeah, yeah and we're going to get out of here and uh, get rid of out of the flies, yeah. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching this third video in this series on our Simpson Desert Trip where we try to get to all three corners of Queensland. We've already achieved two, that's Haddon's Corner and Popple's Corner, and now we're heading back out to the desert and uh, going to head down towards that third corner, which is Cameron's Corner. So stay tuned. drove in over two or three hundred sand dunes so naturally we've got to turn around and travel back over two or three hundred sand dunes but uh, yeah that's all part of the fun so tonight we're heading for Ayers Creek where we're going to set up camp for the night and uh, then we'll head back into Birdsville in the morning after crossing Big Red. Well, you can't get better than that can you? I think I just found some dinosaur footprints. Have a look at these. Oh, it's an emu. And I'll put my foot next to it for comparison. It's a big bloody thing. Yeah. As you can see, the flies are a little thick, but that's normal out in the desert. And luckily, Rose bought us these fly screen covers for our hats and they do an awesome job. Thanks Rose, great job. It's a beautiful evening, not a cloud in the sky and we're all set up. We settled into camp that night. We timed things really perfectly. We got this beautiful full, they called it a blue moon, which funny enough set early in the morning and as the moon was going down we found the sun was coming up on a brand new day. Uh, that's just something you just don't see every day, of course. Beautiful scenery. And, uh, of course, next uh, we had to cross the creek again here at Ayers Creek. It was flowing since the rains that were happened earlier in that year. Of course, there were still a few more sand dunes to go. Uh, some say they're steeper on the eastern side than they are on the western side. I don't know about that. They seem pretty much even either way you go. So uh, whether you're crossing from east to west or west to east, I don't think it makes a heap of difference. Uh, it's still fun either way. <laughs> then if we come over this sand dune, we get the first view of the very last sand dune that we're going to cross, which is Big Red. So Big Red is the tallest sand dune uh, in the Simpson Desert. It's absolutely monstrous, very steep and soft at the top. Almost. 
So we made it to within about two meters of the top. Almost there, but just not quite. Uh, the tire pressures we had, we had 20 in the front and about 22 in the back. We still had quite a bit of water left in the tanks, uh, full weight in the car. So yeah, I'm not surprised we didn't quite make it over the top. And, uh, but we thought we'd give it another go. We've only got this one sand dune to go before we finish and air up again. We probably should have stopped and aired down to about 15 or so PSI. But, uh, well, what the heck, we thought we'd have a, have a bit of a play anyway. <laughs> don't realize how tall this sand dune is but just to give you a bit of a scale well as just have a watch as I reverse down this hill and reverse down and reverse down and reverse down it's a long way back up again Having conquered Big Red, uh, we stopped and watched a couple of other cars trying the same sort of thing. And uh, there is one coming up the exactly the same track we went up in the first place there. And I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, no, I don't think he can. No, he's going to stop as well. And he didn't even make it up as far as we did the first time. So uh, yeah, it's a bit of a tough hill. So that was the last sand dune, we took down the sand flag and we aired up the tyres and prepared to head back into Birdsville. filling up ready for the races on Saturday. After leaving Birdsville we headed south to get to the third corner which is Cameron's Corner. Now it's a long way across very similar sort of terrain. It may not look a lot different to the uh, the other desert but we're now in Sturt's stony desert. And I've just turned the video camera on when it's not stony. 
but it was tiny a minute ago. We'll be here again. After looking on the maps, we found that we were going to be going pretty close to uh, Birkenwell's dig tree. So, uh, yeah, we thought, yeah, let's take a little detour into there. It's still a long way to go. It's hundreds of kilometres to get from one corner to the other. So just enjoy the journey. Roads are long and mostly straight and fairly flat. Uh, they have been chopped up a little bit with recent rains, but uh, it's all dried out now. But the surfaces can vary. Uh, some are quite smooth and almost sandy, and others can be quite gravelly and almost rocky. Uh, some parts here have really chewed up the tyres a little bit. But um, yeah, if you're worried about that sort of thing, maybe avoid a, a journey like this, but uh, we thoroughly enjoyed it. Now there's not a lot lives out here in the desert, but uh, we did manage to actually find some camels. And here they are. So after quite a few hours of driving, uh, we started to get close to where we were heading there, which is at Cooper's Creek, which is the site of the Birkenwills dig tree. So Birkenwills tried a journey all the way from Victoria right the way up to the Northern Territory, trying to find pastures along the way. But they set up a camp here at Cooper's Creek. up to the dig tree. There's supposed to be a ranger here. So this is the entry to the dig tree site. Little information hut here on the right hand side. It's camping is available here twenty dollars a car. Get an envelope out of the box there, pop the twenty bucks in it, put your rego number on there and into this box. Cooper's Creek at the dig tree. It has a lot of water in it and a duck. Oh, and a whole stack of ducks. We camped on Cooper Creek. You can camp anywhere here. There's Colin and I. There's the campfire from last night. We're at Burke and Will's dig tree. When they arrived back in camp after travelling all the way to the Gulf of Carpentaria, they were just about on their last legs and only to discover that they were nine hours behind their support crew who left after waiting an extra month and a bit. So this is the dig tree. It's quite a decent sized tree for this area. And that's where the blaze was cut. And there was another blaze on that limb there, but it's healed over. Cole, smile. Cole's at the dig tree. Still visible a little bit is this one, which is B L X B. And this is the face tree. Now Burke's remains were recovered and taken back to Melbourne and actually given a state funeral. And then John Dick, a photographer who came up to photograph the dig tree, left a carving in one of the trees as a memorial to Burke. And that's how it is now, on the actual tree. This morning we're leaving the dig tree and we're heading down to Cameron Corner. Should only take a couple of hours. I'm not sure which track we're taking, but I'm sure I'll be told all in good time. We've turned the corner. Now we 
going to the other corner. Corner 249. Yep. We keep coming across patches of little tiny white flowers by the road. For some sort of days, you know, I'll get a couple of close ups. Here we are at last, Cameron's Corner, New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia. Right, here we are, Cameron's Corner, Brookman, RDAMP, Minister for Land, South Australia, bloody bloody blah, blah, June 1969. I'm in South Australia at the moment, Queensland's over there, New South Wales is over there. And that is the dog proof fence. So that was the third of our three corner expedition. What a trip it was. We had a fantastic time. It was great seeing the three corners plus all the travel in between. There are some long dusty roads, uh, long spaces. It's just amazing country to see. But we also had the other bonuses, of course, of the trips in Charleville and of course Batuta where we stopped for the Batuta drag race. So it's not just the scenery that you see around the place, it's all the people that you meet and the fun that you'll have. And I'd like to say thank you to all those who really contributed a lot to just being a part of our experience. The to be down the road in front of the hotel I won the first race and I won the second race. The Popsy very smartly up behind me. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs> spend some money. And spend some money. Absolutely. <laughs> So thanks for coming along on this journey with us. It's been so much fun. I love the four wheel driving up these sand dunes and down the other side and seeing all sorts of weird and wonderful things out there. I really encourage everybody to get out there and experience this great country of ours. What a fabulous thing to do. If you haven't seen the other videos in this series, make sure you go back through the playlist and have a look uh, we've just had some awesome fun. Pong the little hour, pong the little hour, whatever it is. It's old man in here when he's found. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you're liking this series, uh, please give it a subscribe and like it. And, you know, make sure you hit that subscribe button wherever it is. I can never tell. But, uh, yeah, please do that and help us out. Okay, see you along the track. Nanny Rose is going to go and drive through Nolan's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>